Statistically, there's a link between uh, people being stopped and searched and uh, knife crime being reduced. It's not really targeted at everyone. It's a certain thing. Pick a minority to search. I think it's like a minority. Um, I went to like school in Essex, and in Essex, like, all the boys down there, they've never been like stopped and searched. But in comparison to like my friends in East London, they've been like stopped and searched a few times. It's just like the differences. With, with teams, right? There's like a I say in London, there's a specific look you go for, right? And with, with, when it comes to a look, there's a look that you see, and you're probably like just based on how society views you, you're like, all right, this look is kind of hostile, and there's a you associate with that. So and. In terms of how, like, so this, I'd, I'd say it comes with how you dress as well, and I think that's a big factor in it. Because if I was walking down the street and I see some people dressed in hoods, trackies, and like just how how it comes off, like as a vibe, and how people like just kind of walking, how their aura is. And I hang out with loads of black people, like, and this like loads of different ethnic minorities, and well, not even that, but just loads of different people, uh, different colors of skin mm -hmm. as well. And I know people do who do may do like dodgy things here and now, but we've never been stopped and searched. Mm -hmm. And I think that's based on how like society kind of be scared. You don't really see the only time we do get like in trouble with police is just like because we're in a space we're not meant to be in. But with in terms of like I've got other friends who probably just in terms of the way and what they do and where they hang out and stuff, they get stopped and searched. What else? What's up? It's your boy Kobe in the cut, here for candy, and your daily fixes of skateboarding. Jules Sweat did it again with the whole team, Scum Worldwide, THS, Sneeze on your nan. What's going on, eh? Doing crazy shit all over the place. You know where we go? We got your boy Kyle, your boy Matt, your boy Jarrell. Oh, he went crazy over there. You know, shout out to South Bay, they did crazy. Be sure to check out the other videos. You know it's not just about skateboarding. You know it's not! Well, uh, Illegal Civilization already dropped the new video, Chestnut Roasting. You know how that was. It was amazing. You got all the team in there. You got everyone there. All them pre nut. Always skating in them new J's. Or them old J's, you know, them old school ones. Kira Belly does it again with another banger. He done a back three of the free block and a back 360 kickflip. You know how it is. I still gotta go back to my favorite FA Entertainment. Come out with a new a raw footage. Raw. Go check it out. Yeah, you know, another old school for me would be uh, Cherry by Supreme. You know, you got the whole team in there. Really interesting soundtracks. Uh, uh, you know, it's Sean Pablo, Sage Elsessa, who else is there? Jason Dill. Powerful, amazing people, legendary. Mark Gonzalez, Nicole Smith, Ty Sean. Uh, uh, you know, that's all. It's a wrap. I'll see you next week. But I want to show you this clip. Check it out.
not really how they're raised, but it has a lot to do with gangs and stuff like that. So how certain areas have their code, and then they try to bring like their young ones and get kids from young age to kind of follow them. Mm -hmm. And that's what sort of influences it for them, like not just a guy himself carrying a knife, but maybe their girlfriend will really carry it, or they'll hide it for them. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to turn to a fight, they'll grab it and stab someone. Some people believe, oh, I'm in a gang, these people will protect me, they're my boys, they're my girls, they're everything, they're, my, they're basically my family. If something goes down, they're gonna be there for me. When, when in the term, when it gets really, really bad, and then it gets, you can't handle it, everything's going bad, you can tell the police are gonna come, they're not gonna be there for you. You're gonna see, you're gonna be standing there, let's just say you accident, someone stabs your brother, someone in your own gang stabs your own brother, and then you're there trying to get help. You see all these lot running across the block, getting away, getting away, because the police are coming, and because you're involved, you're gonna get in trouble for it. So it's a thing that is also a problem. Being in the gang isn't necessarily protection. It's just no. it's danger. pride, danger, like danger to yourself, danger to yeah. your family, yeah. danger to the people around you. What do you have in at CNI? Okay, I'm the placement officer here, the work placement officer, which means that I assist with placing students into work placements and also taking care of the health and safety whilst they're in the work placement. There's also another part to the job that I do, which is called dealing with students who are at risk of failing the course, whatever course they may be on. Um, do you enjoy your job? I do on the whole, yes. have good days and bad days, but <laughs> honestly, yes, I do. I enjoy working with students. Cool. As a student, um, what would the ideal candidate be for a job role? Yeah, for an employer. Yeah. Uh, I go to many, many employers, and the one thing they say to me is that it's good that you have the qualification, eh? That's the most important thing. But even more important than that, they say they want somebody who has work skills. They want somebody who understands what it means to be on time, to be punctual, to be attentive in, in, in the workplace, who can work as a team, and who can prioritise their workload and has listening skills. Those are the things that sometimes students who go for jobs lack. So they may have the qualification, but they lack these other things that come with it. So it's all about being employable and fitting into an organisation. So if I was going to give you a tip going forward for a job, have a unique selling point. Show them that you can be um, the face of the company, that you can fit in with the, with the company, that you can work in a team, and that you can bring something unique, something different to the organisation. Okay? Thank you. All right. Hi, we're here in the, in the drama department. We're going to go see if there's a new talent over there. I want to know what you guys are doing now, what's your new project? Um, well, we've just been given the script for um, Guys and Dolls, yeah. so that's going to be our musical, okay. our final project. And we've been given like a list of songs and dances we need to prepare for the audition for the casting. Oh, okay, so you guys yeah. have to audition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for this one yeah. we have to audition. So we sort of have to like find a character and then we go for the only some people have already auditioned for drama school, so they have applied for university, university. So some other people are doing apprenticeships, taking a gap year, but most of us are doing auditions now. Oh, okay.
I'm doing an interview for a play theatre, so it's different. I'm trying to get into Brunel University, the college drama school. I'm trying to do this Thank you. Cheers. This week there was the show on Channel 4 called The Murder Detectives and it was about a boy, an 18 year old boy that was stabbed in Bristol and the boy that stabbed him, his parents help, helped him get away and like as a parent, from a young age you should like endorse it in your child that like, that's wrong and you don't kill people, you don't murder, you don't go out and do gang violence and things like that. So if you're helping them get away then obviously you're not really agreeing with it but you're not like letting them know that it's wrong because by like helping them run away it's sort of cowardly, like you have to own up to your own like, so just that was my child, I would like totally disown them. Like, I think okay. if you don't know that it's wrong, yeah. and your parents are telling you it's wrong, your, your parents are meant to be like a role model to you, they're meant to teach you these things. In yeah. that position, you won't know that. You can't just judge from something like that. There could have been, like, parents have different love for their children, it's not just the same thing. That, that parent could have been scared or like, afraid of a mean or wanted to leave their child. How can you be afraid of your own child? As a parent, I personally think you failed. You can't be scared of your own child, your child's supposed to respect you. Uh, hello, I'm Jake. I'm calling from Candy Studios. Um, we're, we're here looking for people uh, doing something interesting around the college. And we're kind of drunk. Exciting that I'm doing today is I'm editing a poster on Photoshop for an event on the 29th of January in Kingston celebrating live music and live illustration. This has been Joe Pavoy from Canada Studios. Thank you for watching. This is what their course comprises of. Ten different joints done to one millimetre tolerance. So this would be the corner of a door or a window. Okay? And that is the BTEC, no sorry, that's the City and Guilds Level 1 course. Ten joints plus a table. There's on the bout you. 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 What about a hit? What about a hit of your low? Start to shake. Start to shake with your hair. Word of a click. Word of a click. Are you a freak? You turn and face me. Maybe this time I'll choose. What about a hit? What about a hit of your low? Start to shake. What is the most difficult thing that you can make? Oh, that would be the dovetail joints, the through dovetail and the stop dovetail joints. That's the most difficult joint we do. You can't really reflect on our society or like our generation for being so rebellious when there's no one to help us out. At the end of the day, we all go through stuff, we all go through hard times, we all have, you know, messed up situations, everyone goes through something that they feel is bigger than the rest of the world, but it's your life. So the whole stabbing, it's your choice. No one forced your hand to pick up the knife. Mm. You got up, you picked up the knife and said you wanted to use it. Yeah. So 
I'm sitting here and I don't have a life. I chose not to have a life. So at the end of the day, it's back to the young people. It's your choice. What you what do you want to do with your life? Huh? I have a lot for to go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 now, but, um, you know when people are talking about education, yeah? yeah. I feel like that is the most important thing. Education is the key because I don't feel like um, growing up in my high school, there was enough talks about what's going on. That there's, like, I never learned low politics. I had to go and research my own politics to know what's going on in the country. There was no secrets like PSHE on a Friday. PSHE was like money, yeah. things that were going to help me. I do. I still to this day don't know what mortgages. <laughs> I don't know that. And there's nothing. I feel like we learn stuff that are not relevant. Like I know photosynthesis, but yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, there's no life stuff. Life it's skills. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's information that won't carry me further than it will now. Yeah. But I feel like that's why because people are not educated on certain fields that we need to know. That. Like, I don't think. I'm sorry. No, go on. And I, I still don't feel like I can sit in a room with some people and actually like sit and talk about in, intelligent things like politics, talk about things that's going on in the world. Like, people won't have a clue because they're not educated in the field. Like they just don't want to know or they're not aware. And then the teachers can go to you, oh, God, do it. Your parents say, don't do it. But then it's that thing in your head, God, you do it. But why? It's you at the end of the day, it's no one else. Even though it could be depending on your area, it could be the roughest area ever, and then you go, oh, I'm going to stab someone. You could blame the area, you could blame everything around you, you could blame your parents. But at the end of the day, it's that voice in your head that goes, do it. It's no one else's. And then you have to go and face that consequence. Because you know that you've listened to that voice in your head. If you, if you know from right from wrong, why are you going to listen to it? It's just simple, it's simple common sense. If you know something's wrong, and you know... Oh, if I, oh, I'm going to stab someone today. I'm not going to go to court. Some, somehow, life will catch you and you will go down.